I love positive affirmations. I am perfect, whole, and complete. Today, I put my own needs first. I release fear and anxiety and embrace my greater yet to be. I write my affirmations on sticky notes and I put them everywhere. On the bathroom mirror, on the walls of my bedroom, I even put them on the sun visor of my car so that every time the sun gets in my eyes and I pull the visor down, I have great ideas and make useful contributions. <laughs> I want to be able to look at any surface and be reminded that I have value. I know. Sometimes I feel ridiculous. Like a caricature from a Saturday Night Live sketch. I can't believe I'm that guy. But I kind of have to be. Because on its own, my brain is not so positive. Left to its own devices, it can actually get pretty ugly in there. See, my brain tells me things like, you won't follow through, and you're just going to fuck up again, Sarah. <laughs> now I know. I know. A lot of people have that voice in their head, that inner critic that steps in to berate them and to judge them. But in my head, it's not just an inner critic. In my head, I have a full-on inner critic choir. <laughs> voice upon voice, biting, relentless, all in super jazzy three-part harmony. <laughs> You'll just fuck up again, so why bother? You'll just fuck up again, so why bother? But most of all, I use my positive affirmations. I play them constantly in my head. I set them to music. It's kind of like my own affirmation radio station. <laughs> I am perfect, whole, and complete. I am perfect, whole, and complete. I have great ideas, I make useful contributions. I have great ideas, I make useful contributions. Today I put my own needs first. I figure if I can make the good voices in my brain loud enough, I can literally drown out the choir. I will inundate it. I will flood it. I'll make the good voices in my brain so loud that negative voices will be powerless against them. Damn it. Yeah. to a point, but it's exhausting. I mean, I'm constantly at war inside my own head. I can never let my guard down. I can never relax. I never get to rest. But this is how it is. Years go by like this. I watch my 30s come and then go, and all the while, here I am with my critic choir on one side, my affirmation station on the other, and me just stuck in the middle, trying to play referee. The year I turned 40, I decided to give myself a gift, and I go on a week-long silent retreat. Seven days of meditation, seven days of silence. It's supposed to be relaxing. It's supposed to be vacation. It's supposed to be self-care. It's supposed to be 
well, silent, <laughs> but not in my head it isn't. <laughs> my inner critic choir seizes the opportunity. I'm a captive audience, no work, no school, no friends to get in its way. It blasts at full volume, finally its chance to shine. Noticing what's happening, my affirmation station kicks up even louder. It stages the concert to end all concerts. It's a sold out show, standing room only. Both sides are now giving the performance of a lifetime. It's wall to wall sound, 24 seven, in my head. I feel like I'm going insane. What was I thinking coming here? On the morning of the third day, I sit down for meditation. It's 5 a.m., it's dark, it's cold. I'm in a packed room surrounded by other retreat goers, each one of us sitting cross-legged on a cushion and swaddled in yoga blankets. So far, the scene is exactly as it's been the previous two mornings, except on this morning, they have brought in a meditation teacher to guide us. Follow your breath in and out. She speaks in that annoying tone of voice reserved exclusively for meditation teachers and yoga instructors. <laughs> now, rest in awareness of whatever arises. I'm aware that I'm cold. I'm aware that my left hamstring is cramping. In the background, I hear my choir starting to sing. What a surprise, they're telling me I suck at meditation. <laughs> Just stay quiet, I tell her. Allow your thoughts to flow like a river. I bristle at the river analogy. Why does it always have to be a river? It's so tight. Now I hear my affirmation station switching on. It's telling my choir to go suck it. It's telling me that I am perfect, whole, and complete. Just silent retreat, guys. Not now. I forcibly block everybody out. <laughs> now, I want you to treat every thought, every feeling, as an honored guest. <laughs> Invite each one in. <laughs> Offer them a seat. Offer them tea. <laughs> she cannot be serious. <laughs> Invite them in. I'm currently expending every ounce of my energy trying to keep these voices out. <laughs> Offer them a seat? They have no business being here, much less making themselves at home. Offer them tea? These thoughts have made my life a living hell for years, years, and she wants me to offer them fucking tea? At this point, I'm clenching my jaw, gritting my teeth, I'm sitting on my hands, every muscle in my body is tensed up against this idea. I can't. I can't let them in. And then, all of a sudden something happens. I don't know if I'm exhausted from the effort. I don't know if I'm just sick and tired of fighting. But whatever it is, I surrender. I take a breath in. I let it out. And I let them in. I let them all in. I let the critic choir in. I let the affirmation station in. I let the good and the bad and the wanted and the unwanted. I just stop fighting. I have great ideas and make useful contributions. You do, you do here, come on. <laughs> you will not follow through. You're probably right here, come on, have a seat. <laughs> I'm perfect, whole, and complete. Well, it's good to see you here. <laughs>
You'll just fuck up again, so why bother? <laughs> You're here too! Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Now that they're all here, my mind feels spacious, expansive. There's room for everyone and no one is shouting. It's almost like once I stopped pushing, they all stop pushing back. A wave of peace washes over me. And for the first time in a really, really long time. I get to rest. <laughs>